So TDP is a very, very rare blood disorder, but it's very important because it is immediately life-threatening. It presents with low blood counts, particularly low blood platelets and red blood cells, along with variable degrees of organ impairment, which can range from things that are severe like strokes and coma to something that might be very mild, such as a headache or transient numbness or tingling somewhere. Other common symptoms are just fatigue and abdominal discomfort. All of this just highlights the presentation is very variable, which is why recognizing TTB can be challenging, which is why we like to emphasize that in any patient who presents with unexplained low platelets and a low hemoglobin who has what we call schistocytes or red blood cell fragments on the blood smear, that's essentially enough to go down the path of TTP and treat as possible TTP until we know better because untreated TTP is rapidly fatal. If there's an, another more obvious explanation for these findings, well, that should be treated, but otherwise it is safest to go down treat for TTP route. Now, when we think of TTP, you know, or any other condition, in fact, where there are low platelets, the reflex is to think of a bleeding tendency. But TTP is very different in that it's actually a clotting disorder. And the platelets are low because they're getting used up in tiny blood clots in the blood vessels. The reason TTP happens is that there is a deficiency in this enzyme called ADMTS13. And the deficiency is either genetic or inherited in very rare cases called congenital TTP. But more commonly, it is an autoimmune disorder in which antibodies are formed against this enzyme. Now, ADMTS13 is like a little scissor. Its job is to cut a clotting factor called von Willebrand factor into smaller pieces so that these pieces can circulate in the bloodstream without causing problems. Now in TTP, you don't have the ADMTS13 enzyme. So you've got ultra large pieces or multimers of von Willebrand factor circulating. They're super sticky for platelets and lead to the formation of platelet clots in the blood vessels, blocking the blood supply and leading to organ failure. And that's really what's happening in TTP. The platelets are going down because they're getting used up in these blood clots. Now, the people that are most likely to encounter TTP are ER physicians, sometimes primary care doctors, and even ICU doctors very often before they come to the attention of a hematologist who ends up treating them. And it is absolutely true that as an ultra rare disease with an incidence of something like one to three per million, there are many doctors who are never going to encounter TTP, but it remains critical to recognize it when you do. So what we often recommend is rather than thinking of everyone who presents like this as TTP, it may be helpful to think of what should we be doing or how should we be working up patients who present with unexplained low platelets and a low hemoglobin level with or without any other symptoms. And this part is critical. The first step really should be a differential diagnosis in our heads. So common things that present, I shouldn't say common, but things that sometimes present with an acute drop in platelet counts are things like immune thrombocytopenia, but in that case, the blood counts such as hemoglobin levels should not be low unless someone is bleeding profusely. There are disorders such as TTP and a related disorder such as hemolytic uremic syndrome, in addition to a couple of other causes of low platelets. The next step is to get some basic blood work uh, that starts with a blood smear that should be looked at by either a pathologist or a hematologist who is experienced in this to look for schistocytes or red cell fragments in the blood. Other supporting tests are things like the lactate dehydrogenase level or haptoglobin level that can help support a diagnosis of hemolysis. And finally, if there's enough suspicion, essentially based on the presence of schistocytes in the blood smear and low platelets, a test called the ADMTS13 level should be sent off because it's confirmatory. However, we do not ever wait for that result to come back before treating a patient because at many sites, the test is not available in the same hospital. It's sent out to other central labs to result in kit takes several days. You really cannot wait several days to treat TTP. So what can you do while waiting for these test results? There have been some clinical risk scores developed that may help guide this decision-making process. Those include one score called the plasmic score and another one called the French score, which is simpler 
The French score includes really only a plated count less than 30,000, as well as a serum creatinine that's less than 2.26. If you've got one or both of these findings in a patient who has low platelets and schistocytes on the blood smear, then the likelihood of this being TTP is very, very high. The plasmic score has slightly higher sensitivity and specificity. And in, and in addition to the platelet count and serum creatinine level, also includes things like an INR less than 1.5, the absence of cancer or organ transplant and a hemolysis variable. And it can help tease out patients who are likely to respond to TTP type treatment, which I'll go into in a minute, and patients who may have a thrombotic microangiopathy of a different cause. Now, if there is reasonably high suspicion that this might be TTP, the right thing to do after sending that ADMTS-13 activity out is to treat the patient. The best treatment available right now is to start as soon as possible with plasma exchange and immunosuppression. Plasma exchange is a procedure in which we put a large vascular access into a patient, very similar to a dialysis catheter, and essentially exchange the patient's plasma out and replace it with normal plasma. What this does is that it, first of all, removes the antibody that is leading to low ADMTS-13 levels. It provides some normal ADMTS-13. It potentially also removes these large multimers of von Willebrand factor. Um, patients tend to have reasonably rapid improvement in blood counts in the, their clinical picture. But as you'll understand, this is not a permanent fix. It's not really dealing with the underlying immune problem in TTP, which is the antibody against ADMTS-13, which is why we also add immunosuppression, which is most commonly steroids, but may also include a drug called rituximab, which attacks B cells that produced antibodies. And more and more hematologists will use it upfront for the treatment of TTP because it also prevents relapses down the line. Finally, over the last two years, we have access to a new drug which prevents the interaction of platelets with the long von Willebrand factor multimers and thereby prevents more platelets getting used up in clots and also potentially leads to faster resolution of the low platelets and prevents organ damage. This drug is called caplicizumab and is approved for use in TTP, but needs to be used along with plasma exchange and effective immunosuppression. With this type of treatment, the outcomes of acute TTP have improved significantly. Prior to the plasma exchange era, over 85 or 90 percent of patients with TTP died. Now mortality rates from an acute TTP episode are in the range of 5 to 10 percent, which is a marked difference from the world maybe 30 or 40 years ago. 